I have been associated with crepe myrtle so long, it, I can't even tell you when I started. My major focus was to be a source of income by using uh, the character I created, Karina Chow. Um, my journey with HIV started when they developed the test for the blood supply in 1985. From 1985 to 1990, I was under the, what you would call HIV status. In 1990, the other shoe dropped and I went what you call, what they used to call full blown. And I moved to Durham to die. Well, being a doll, I wanted to get in with the dolls that were there so that my last years could be productive raising to raise money because I felt if I paid in, when I passed and my family needed help, that they could be helped. So I've always, but the whole creation of child is to raise money. I've led a, a wonderful life and I've not really wanted for much of anything. So what I can give back to my community is what I want to do. Um, in 1990, I moved to Durham and I met Erica Van Court, who is one of the oldest dolls at the power company. And she took me under her wing and she became kind of like my drag mother. Well, about a year into my living in Durham, she passed and they brought all of her stuff out of the dressing room. And they said, if you can wear her clothes, I can see it right now. If you can wear her clothes, do so. But she was a size zero. So Chow is far from a zero. But the accessories table was where I headed because accessories know no size. And amongst the hairspray, <sighs> dirty jewelry was a strand of pearls. And uh, growing up as a baby in the 60s, Jackie O and her signature pearls and every woman I knew wore pearls. So pearls were like a standard symbol. And so I vowed to wear those pearls in memory of her. Because when people died, people stopped talking about them because to talk about them would be to reintroduce that subject matter that nobody wanted to talk about because it was just, it was just so devastating. Nobody just, it was just like, let it be gone. I don't even want to hear about it. And it was so sad, but I thought I'm gonna do a quiet representation of everybody I know that passes. And from that point on, when I would go to the hospital, I would be summoned to the hospital by many of my friends in the business and by people I knew. And I would usually leave pearls on the bed and the social worker or the, a nurse would make sure they got back to the clinic and then they would get back to me. And behind me, you can see that's the pearls that I can't wear anymore because the strands are broken. There's an urn as big as one of those back there that I have that are wearable and they're in my drag bag now that I still wear so they can still go out and see because they all died at such a young age in the height of what I would consider the blossom of their life. I mean, they were out partying and having a good time and being beautiful and dancing and laughing and just making people happy. It was just, it was a wonderful time. And to be cut short so early in life, I just feel like if I can let their spirits go out with me and y'all know how crazy I am, then they can also get the smiles. They can see y'all. And for the past 30 to 31 years, 30 years, I've been collecting pearls. The latest strand I got was during the pandemic, my sister-in-law's boss lost an uncle and it had been one of those family things that no one talked about. And when she found out what I did with the pearls, she sent me a strand of pearls in memory of her uncle. And so I still get pearls in memory of people. And it's not just gay people, it's children, it's mothers, it's fathers, it's brothers, it's sisters, it's aunts, it's uncles, nephews, nieces, good friends. And I just feel like it's my place to carry on. And as long as I can carry on, and I'm definitely feeling my age now, but as long as I can carry on and carry them out there, I will do so.